Hey, okay, this is actually me pre-editing the video. Long story short, I kind of forgot to explain exactly why I was doing this. If you're unfamiliar, there's this huge movement right now called the van life movement, and basically it's people moving out of their homes into a more minimalistic lifestyle uh, into camper van conversion. Basically, I'll take a big van, like a Mercedes Sprinter, a Ford Transit, a Dodge Promaster, or a step van like this, and they'll convert it into a nice living space, better and more personalized than an RV would be. And I got to thinking about how that would really be a great idea financially for myself. So long story short, I got a good deal on this van. I'm gonna convert it into what I'm hoping to be a luxury living space. And uh, I wanna take you guys along for the journey too. So frankly, from the perspective of a, uh, a young person like myself, who's just getting started with their life, this kind of lifestyle makes a lot of sense. But financially, if I put something, if I put money into this instead of into rent, I'll have something tangible that I actually own at the end of it. Uh, but obviously I don't have the credit or the savings to start a mortgage on my house, so I'm not building any equity, but obviously I still need a place to live. So doing something like this, I feel like I'm not throwing my money away and also it'll be a lot cheaper to find a place to park this or, or just have a mobile lifestyle and uh, work full time online. So my living expenses will be less, I'll be able to save quicker, I'll be able to buy a piece of property sooner and then I can live in this while I'm building my house. Obviously that's a distant future thing. So I just wanted to give you some uh, explanation behind the personal reasons of why I'm doing this, more so than just the physical procedure it'll take to get this thing into the building space. So now you know where I'm coming from. Enjoy the video. Okay, okay, okay. I know we haven't really done much yet. But I was looking at the, the label on this box. Check this out. This is from NASA. <laughs> Also, before he judged too harshly, I picked up this van out of an orchard about four miles from my house for $50. I'm not kidding. I paid $50 for this van. So this engine will be being replaced. So you can see how bent up and rusty all this metal framework is here. And so that's all going to be replaced along with these metal side panels here. All right, so we've removed our valley pan from the engine and our intake manifold, not in that order, of course. As you can see, both of these parts are very, very rusty, and that'll need to be fixed before I put this on the new engine. And so I'm gonna try a method of rust removal I've never actually tried before, electrolysis. So basically what we're going to do is put this in an electrolyte solution, then we'll hook up an electrode to a sacrificial piece of metal and an electrode to this piece of cast. Both of those going to a 12 volt manual battery charger, and then hopefully all the rust will migrate from this onto the other piece of sacrificial steel. But before we can do that, we're gonna go ahead and remove all of these extra parts all the way down to just the intake manifold. As you can see, we have quite a bit of rust on these cooling components as well. So we'll go ahead and put those in the bath too.
Old radiator, new radiator. So unfortunately I could not find a radiator to directly replace the one that came out of it. They just simply aren't available anywhere online that I could find. So I had to settle with this, which is still made for this engine. It's actually for a Scout 2, but unfortunately the other one is a little bit longer. So it didn't work on the old radiator mounts that I had, so I had to fabricate a new one here and repurpose this one with some ears to hold it on this way instead of the way it was facing this way. But all in all, that's now securely in place. I've bypassed the heater core for now because I don't know what kind of contaminants that has in it. And it may leak, it may have all kinds of problems, and I don't want to put any contaminants into my freshly rebuilt engine. The next thing I need to do is prime the whole oil system, make sure that there's uh, fluid in the transmission. And I may put a little bit of upper cylinder lubricant, even though there is some assembly oil uh, in this thing, I'm sure, to make sure that I don't score any of the cylinders when I'm turning it over and starting it for the first time. So yeah, we're going to get to that next, and hopefully we'll get this thing running today. <laughs> Maybe. All right, so with the engine and transmission installed, we have going, but arguably more importantly, next we need stopping. Fun fact, on these old internationals, the driver's side lug nuts are actually threaded left hand. So I would turn them right to loosen them. Thanks, international, very cool. Now, a good rule of thumb whenever you're working on anything, especially brakes, but something that you're not terribly familiar with, is to take pictures of the entire process before so you know how it was arranged, so you know how to put it back together. I did this with the engine, all the carburetor hookups, all of that as well, just to make sure that I limited my exposure to mistakes. So quick tip if you don't do this already. Now ordinarily I'd replace the bearings too, but since I'm not going to be driving this for quite a while yet I'm going to wait, but honestly these are not in bad shape. Surprising. So I'm going to pack them with fresh grease and reuse them just to move it on down the road a little ways or I'm going to start working on the uh, body and the interior.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Phase one is complete, getting this thing moving under its own power after 17 years of not being able to do so. I apologize for the delay in putting out content, but I hope that's gonna change very soon. But this was a huge step in getting closer to the end goal of turning this into a mobile living space. Obviously, there's still a lot more work left to do. I need to redo the brakes all around more permanently. This was just to get it down from its resting place to the new resting place. But I'm very, very pleased with how it's coming along, and I hope you are too. So if you did enjoy this video, please like. And if you want to subscribe so you can see the rest of the progress on this project, I'd greatly appreciate that too, and it helps me out in the YouTube algorithm. Okay, next is phase two, reconditioning the outside, doing all the body work on the front, as you can see putting a new bumper on it, and painting the inside. So that'll be a lot of prep work. Oh boy. As always, I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Uh, again, I do apologize for the delay, and I hope that uh, won't be quite as big of a gap again. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.